What's up guys, welcome back once again to the reviews. Today I'm going to be looking at a new motherboard that I've just purchased for my new build coming up. And this is the Asus ROG Strix B550E-E Gaming Wi-Fi. Basically we're going to take you through this board and I'm going to show you all the features of it. This is a B650E chipset for AM5. Um, so we're going to show you all the features of the board, uh, all the connectivity and everything like that. Um, so you can see what you're getting with this board. It's not a review, it's more of a, just an overview of the board um, to see what you get. Um, so let's get it unboxed. Uh, we'll see what's in the box as well uh, and we'll show you what it's all about. So this is the box it comes in. Obviously, as you can see, it's the model name B650E-E Gaming Wi-Fi from Asus and it's a B650E chipset, PCI, 5, uh, PCI Gen 5 graphics and NVMe support and it's DDR5 as all AM5 boards, boards are. So first of all, you get a little accessory box here, so we'll have a quick look what's in there. In this box, you basically just get your Wi-Fi antennas um, for your Wi-Fi 6E, um, so Wi-Fi 6 compatible, and like I say, you get your antennas there. You get a few more bits in the bottom of the box, so you get an instruction manual, you get some Asus ROG stickers, and you get a few other bits as well, just uh, warranty information and stuff like that, I believe. And you get this here, so you get like, basically a thank you card for buying uh, Asus ROG stuff. Um, won't bother reading that. Then under here, you get your last few bits. So you get two um, SATA or SATA um, cables um, for data. You get an extra Q latch for the uh, M.2. You get some little sticky pads, not sure what they're for, to be honest with you. Um, you get an extra thermal pad for M.2. Um, I assume that's a replacement and not one that you, you need to put on anyway. And then some more sticky pads there. You get some zip ties as well to cable manage. And you also get a ROG keyring as well. Here we have the actual board itself. Um, so let's start by talking through some of the features of this board. Um, we'll start at the top. So up here we've got um, two 8-pin EPS power connections. Um, then also we've got the VRM heat sinks. This, uh, they're quite hef hefty heat sinks on this actually, so the cooling should be quite good on these with uh, sort of cutouts to allow, I assume, to allow some airflow through those. Uh, this is a 16 plus two phase VRM, and these are 70 amp power stages. At the top here, we've got a CPU, CPU optional and AIO pump header for uh, you can use for fans and obviously for use for your AIO pump. Um, so we've got those there. Uh, also at the top here, we've got a four pin 12 volt standard RGB connector. And we've also got a three pin five volt ARGB connector. Coming down the side of the board, we've got four dim slots up to 6400 speed DDR5 in this one. And these do have some sort of reinforcement on them as well by the looks of it. Then obviously we've got your standard 24 pin ATX cable. And we've got the, the AM5 socket here as well with the standard AMD uh, mounting brackets included. Um, they'll probably come off for most coolers, but the, the mounting plate on the back is uh, fixed in place and will be used for a lot of coolers on this. Coming further down this side, we've got a USB-C header. And we've also got a usb 3.2 uh, standard front case header um, so you can use those there for your case and then we get down to the first of four m.2 slots this has four on it and this is going to be pcie gem 5 and you can see we've got a strix branding on here and we've got a big chunky heat sink on there as well Coming over to the side here, we've got the new sort of Q release, I think, or something like that it's called, that Asus have used. So basically now, um, this button here, you press that, and as you can see, the PCIe release latch moves along with that, so it makes it easier to get your graphics card out rather than trying to fiddle around down here trying to undo this latch. You literally push that, and it'll unlock your GPU. That's a really nice feature I like to see on these. And then we've got another four pin pwm header there uh, for case fans on the side here we have four sata six gigabit per second connections for hard drives and things like that and then coming down we've got the the rest of the m.2s 
We've got uh, one there and then two here. Uh, one of them, uh, I believe this one is a up to 110 mil, the rest are 80 mil standard size. Um, so you can fit a different M.2 in one of those. Two of them are PCIe Gen 5 and two are PCIe in Gen 4. We're running it by four speeds. Coming around to the bottom of the board, we've got your front panel connectors. We've, we've got what we've got what looks like a, a couple of um, sections of front panel headers, um, speaker, chassis, and stuff like that. Um, so standard things really down there. Then we've got a, another chassis fan five um, PMW fan header, and we've also got a two-pin thermal sensor connection as well. If you want to put an extra thermal probe in there for coolant temperature or things like that. Coming down to the bottom, we've got PCIe Gen two. Um, connectors for front panels or anything like that or if you need them for peripherals and um, sort of controllers and things like that you can use those and then at the bottom we've got two more three pin five volt ARGB headers uh, here we've got a TB header I'm not sure what that is I'll find out and put that up on the screen so you can see and then we've got two more chassis fan headers I believe this is uh, five in total five headers so one two three four, five, six, seven. There's seven headers including your CPU and stuff like that. And then over here we've got an AAFP connection. Uh, again, I'm not entirely sure what that is, but I'll put that up on the screen so you can see what that is. And we've got, finally, we've got another fan header over here. So you get eight fan headers in total, uh, PWM fan headers. Coming on to the PCIe connections, we've got two Gen 5 by 16 or by 8 or by 4 connections, and we've also got a PCIe Gen 4 by 4 at the bottom here. The top slot, which is PCIe Gen 5, um, will become by 8 instead of by 16 if you populate the uh, third M.2 slot. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind. However, obviously, the, the bandwidth of PCIe Gen 5 is double that of PCI Gen 4, I believe. So even at by 8 you're still running at by uh, basically PCIe Gen 4 speeds. Just want to quickly talk again about the M.2s. So this is the from the top M.2, PCIe Gen 5 M.2. Um, this is the heat sinks. So this one's quite a chunky one. The rest of them um, aren't quite as chunky. I don't know if you can see kind of on camera there. They're not quite as thick as this one, but this one's quite a chunky one. So this is probably where you're going to uh, want to put your main your main drive for your operating system, especially when you get a PCI Gen 5 one, which there isn't many av available at the moment, but when they become more mainstream, you'll be able to use those. Um, but the other thing I want to talk about is this. If you can see it on camera, this here is a Q latch for M.2. So instead of having those fiddly little screws, they've now implemented this. I think a lot of companies are doing this now. So you put your M.2 in and literally twist that, and that locks it in place. And you can uh, lock your M.2 in place like that. Finally, let's talk about the rear I.O. We've got one USB-C uh, 20 gigabits per second port. And we've also got a normal USB-C port there. We've also got a USB 3.2, Gen 2 3.2 here, USB-A port, and we've got two more there as well. Then we've got three more USB Gen 2 3.2. We've also got four USB 2.0s as well. So there's plenty of there's plenty of USB connectivity on the back of this board. Should be most good enough for most people. Um, you shouldn't need much more than that, really. Um, we've also got the top here. We've got a display port. Uh, we've got a HDMI. Um, as AMD 7000 have inbuilt graphics, you can use those as well if you want to. So that's handy if you've got if you think you've got a GPU problem, you can do a bit of problem solving with using those. Coming down, we've got the clear CMOS button, which is nice to see on the back of the board. Um, so you don't have to jump the pins or anything inside on, on the board itself. You can literally do it from the back, which is good. That's nice. And then we've got a BIOS flashback as well. Um, so you can update your BIOS without a CPU installed, and you can do it with a USB uh, dongle um, to update your BIOS. Then we've got your two Wi-Fi 6E antenna connections, which I showed you before you get in the box. We've got an SP diff out um, for audio, for optical audio, and then we've got a rear speaker, uh, centre speaker or sub. We've got a mic in, a line out, and a line in. Um, so we've got plenty of connectivity on the back there. Um, other than that, there's not really a lot more to show you. One thing I didn't mention is this board, and this is one of the reasons I bought this board, 
is we've got a QLED code up here as well. So you can basically see if there's any problems with your motherboard, you can easily quickly look them up and find out what's going off with them there. Um, so that's always nice to have. And then coming around to the back, obviously it's just standard. Basically you've got your back plate here. These back plates are fitted to basically keep hold of the retention system. Um, so you can't really remove these as easily as you could on the old one. And obviously you've got your screws there for mounting your CPU cooler. Um, so that's it guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this has given you an idea of what this board's all about. Um, if you have any questions, obviously please feel free to ask me in the comments section below and I will uh, do my best to answer them. Um, yeah, and that's it guys. Uh, like I say, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, if you did like this uh, video, then please give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.